I'm Andy Chamberlain from UVM Extension Ag Engineering. Welcome to the lab. Today I'd like to give you a little overview of this hand washing station we put together. It's got a few awesome features like needs no running water, uh, needs no drain because it's all self-contained on this cart. So it's good away from any building and can be used out on the field or farmer's market. So this hand washing station is a kit that we put together for under $200. It consists of a wire rack. We got it from Websterant. Comes with a handle, uh, rolling wheels with locks. That's kind of handy. Uh, we then ordered a plastic five gallon water tote, a uh, spring loaded spigot for the water. Um, that spring loaded spigot is connected to a cable which goes down to a foot pedal and then the cable just terminates on an eye hook down here. Now uh, that creates a loop so when you put your foot on the pedal it pulls the cable and because this is a spring loaded spigot it comes back all on its own. With this, we originally started with a uh, hands-free soap dispenser, a battery-powered soap dispenser, but I found that it to be a little bit troublesome. Either the batteries would die over uh, a period of time or the sensor wouldn't work great outdoors, so we resulted just back to a typical bottle of hand soap. Um, also, a bottle of hand soap is very low risk as far as transmitting um, illness, sickness, whatever, because the only thing you're touching is the spout right here and then you're washing your hands. So if by chance there was some germs on here that you do not want, you're immediately washing your hands. So it's pretty uh, low contact and we thought that would be acceptable. So we've got standard soap here and then I found a wire uh, cup holder that I've also included on the website that you can zip tie to the top of the cart here, which would hold your soap. So if you're pushing this across a parking lot at like a farmer's market, your soap bottle isn't gonna fall out, uh, which was one thing that was a little bit of a pain when I was playing with it, is I had to manage uh, the cart and the water jug and the soap and the trash can. It was just like too many things for my hands to hold. So securing everything the most uh, I can, the better. Um, then we've got just this uh, foot actuated trash can over here. Uh, so that way it is hands-free as well. This is an oil drain pan and the oil drain pan was picked up at a local hardware store and that was only like four bucks, which was nice. And then I drilled a hole in the back and suspended it via a little jack chain here. I found I didn't really need that because this just kind of sat in there just fine. But, um, you know, fit and finish it holds it in place a little bit better. And then the front of this uh, sits up here on the handle, so then it slopes back towards the drain. And I have a drain in here, which was a screw-on fitting that goes down to a piece of tubing, and the tubing goes into the bucket via a hole in the bucket. And then this bucket uh, actually is got a easy screw-on lid, so you can just pull up the tabs and it just unscrews a little bit, so. Uh, if you've ever tried to take the lid off a five gallon bucket, generally it's pretty hard on your fingers, but this is a uh, nice easy open. So that easy open makes it easy to drain to dispose of the, uh, the water at the end of the day. Now you will need to drill a hole in this bucket in order for uh, this drain tube to fit in there. Doesn't really matter the size of the hole. You could just leave the lid off, but then it's kind of an open bucket of gross water. So I recommend using the lid and then just making an oversized hole there for this tube um, to fit. You will need to drill a hole in the drain pan as well for this flush mount fitting. So it's a way to make your own sink. You do wanna to remember to crack the vent here on your water jug. Uh, so it gets air inside and doesn't just get locked up. If you've got a lot of people using it back to back, it could, uh, it could start to suck in and then you lose flow. Um, another thing to note, I attached this cable via one of these little spring clips here uh, to the water jug and I put a hole in the spigot here very carefully not to break it. Um, and that is how the cable connects to here. So this is quick and easy to um, remove 
when not in use or swap out water jugs if I have, if I'm bringing this to a place where it's gonna go through a lot of people. This cable clip here is a bit excessive for the size of the cable and the weight that it is holding up, but that's what the hardware store had, so that's what we work with. Now, one way to limit water flow is in this cap uh, is to drill a small hole in here. So it comes like with a knockout plug where you'd have to drill out um, the whole area, which would be like a probably a half inch hole, um, but you don't need a half inch hole. This is only like an eighth inch. That way it's just a trickle of water and you're not wasting water. If you were filling water bottles, you'd wanna open that up so it fills faster, but because you're just washing hands, we wanna preserve water as best we can because you're carrying it in one jug at a time. Now, with a hole that size and a typical 30 second hand wash, um, I found a five gallon jug. I could get like 50 hand washes out of it. So you can use that um, number for reference as you're estimating how many uh, jugs of water you might need for your event. If you set this handle up at the right height, you can actually make this whole thing ADA compliant. So somebody in a wheelchair could roll up to it and have no troubles. They would probably just flip up the tab and let it run while they're doing it if they can't push the foot pedal. The foot pedal is just a block of wood that I had as a scrap and I drilled a couple holes in that and zip tied it to a piece of PEX. And the piece of PEX tubing slides over the cable uh, as to not cause uh, anywhere and to make it, you know, spread out the load so your foot isn't in a tight little yoke, but it makes like a six inch wide spot so um, your foot is easy to press on the cable like a big pedal. Now I will say this wire rack has held up okay, but not as good as I had hoped. Um, I can see it is getting some surface rust on it uh, because it's chrome and not stainless, so if it gets left out in the rain at all, it's gonna it might get, it might rust and therefore gonna get uglier and harder to clean in the long run. So you do wanna bring this in and try to avoid leaving it out where it can get wet. Here I can find, I can just overhang the bucket just a little bit off the bottom of the rack and it's totally fine because it's stationary during use. I will say that adding labels definitely helped people use it. It looks a little strange, you know, so they're trying to figure out what this contraption is. It's a hand washing station. Having a sign that says that would be helpful. That's why I wrote, you know, place foot here on the foot pedal. I drew an arrow, paper towels to direct people down here where they can uh, remove paper towels. Um, I did not label the trash can, but I figured by the time people figure out what they're doing, they know what a trash can is as well. So I did have to drill a couple of holes in the back of the paper towel dispenser, but that allowed me to secure it via zip ties very easily. I also tied a bright string to the key because I wanted to be able to open and refill the paper towels with ease and wasn't too worried about people breaking into it. It was more important for me to have the key right there where I needed it. So there's an overview of this wire rack hand washing station kit. If you need more information, be sure to click the link down in the description below where we've got a full bill of materials written up and a PDF where you can print it out. If you like this video, be sure you like it. If you wanna see more helpful farm tips like this, be sure to subscribe. I hope you have a good day and enjoy cleaner hands after you assemble your hand washing station. Mm -hmm.